guys, Lisa here from Andrew Designs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut bias strips, how to assemble them, and how to create piping. Despite many fears, it's actually really easy to do, and once you've done it a couple of times, you'll be wondering why you never tried it sooner. I hope you find this video helpful. I hope you learn a few little tips and tricks, and let's get started. Okay, so to begin, you want to take your fabric that you're going to be making your um, piping out of. And I like to lie it right side up, but it really doesn't matter. You can have it wrong side up if you prefer. And if you have quite a length of fabric, I like to work from a bottom corner. And I will have the excess fabric hanging off the edge, the top edge of my table, so that it's out of the way. So. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to show you what I do being a left-hander. If you're right-handed, you'll simply want to do this in the opposite direction. So I work in the bottom right-hand corner of my fabric, and I'm making sure it's nice and flat and fairly square on my cutting board. I'm simply going to take my bottom right-hand corner. So remember, if you're right-handed, you'll be taking your bottom left-hand corner. And I'm going to fold it up to make a nice 45-degree line across the fabric, okay? I usually fold it to about halfway. And just smooth it all out. It doesn't have to be too perfect there. Then what you're going to do is take your rotary cutter or your scissors, whatever you prefer, and you're simply going to cut it off, to cut the excess fabric off so that you've just got this square, essentially, which is now folded into a triangle, which is what you're going to use to make your, or to cut your bias strips and then make your piping. Okay, so taking your rotary cutter or scissors, just cut the excess fabric off. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need to use a ruler. It's just simply to remove it. So we can put that to the side because we don't need that now. So keeping your fabric folded in a triangle, you're going to take your top folded corner and you're going to fold it down to meet the bottom folded corner so that down this edge you have two folded edges nicely meeting. Okay, now you're going to take these bottom two folded corners and you're going to take them back across to meet the main fold there in the center, just ensuring your fabric stays nice and flat. So you'll see that now you have four folded edges all meeting nicely. That is exactly what we're after and we're actually going to cut that off in just a moment. So as you'll see, if you gently pull at the fabric, it stretches really nicely. That is the bias of the fabric and that is what we're going to then cut our bias strips from. So taking your folded fabric, leaving it folded as it is, you just need to rotate it around so that the four folded edges are to one side. So here they are. Because I'm left-handed, I'm going to cut them off, so I want those on my left-hand side. However, if you're right-handed, you'll want your fabric 180 degrees the other way, so you can cut them off to that side. So I'll just flip that back around. So just grab your ruler, and all you want to do is make sure that either a line at the top or a line at the bottom horizontally is in line with the folds of the fabric. Don't worry about trying to line this edge up because we're actually about to cut that off, but you want to make sure that either a line across the top or across the bottom is nice and square with your folded fabric. Once you're happy with that and you've got no more than about a quarter of an inch poking out here and all four folds are off the edge of the ruler, just take your rotary cutter and cut those off. Now that is rubbish, we don't need that anymore, so we can put that to the side. And now you'll have, keeping your fabric folded, you'll have nice, perfectly cut, raw edges of the fabric on the bias. So turn your fabric 180 degrees back the other way so that you're now cutting it correctly. And you want to pop your ruler on it and cut strips the width as per your pattern directions. So for the pattern I'm making, I need to cut one and a half inch strips, which will suit the thicker cotton cording that I'm going to make the piping out of. Okay, so for thinner, thinner cording, you'll need to cut narrower strips. But for mine, I'm cutting one and a half inches wide. And you just want to make sure that your mark on your ruler is nicely squared up with the beautiful cut edge that we've just made try and get those bias strips as equal as possible all the way along. Once you've lined it up, simply cut it off, nice and straight through. And if you open it out, you will find you have two pieces of fabric. 
cut just like that and if you give it a gentle pull you'll see it has a nice amount of give that's because the fabric has been cut on the bias or on the diagonal of the fabric and it will make it really easy once we've made the piping to curve round corners of your bag panels. So that is how we cut our fabric strips ready to make the piping. If you need more length for your pattern, you'll need to just work your way along your fabric and cut off the strips as per your pattern directions. So once you've done that, pause the video while you go and do that and then pop back here and we'll start to assemble our bias strips. Okay, so taking your bias strips that you've just cut off your bulk of fabric, first, before we stitch them together, we want to tidy up these ends so that they're nice and square, and that will cut off any salvage or any raw edges that you have already got there. So just taking your ruler and your rotary cutter, make sure you line up one of the horizontal lines on your ruler with one of the cut edges of a bias strip, as close as you can to the end, so you're just cutting off the salvage or that angled edge and we're just going to cut that off okay so you want to go through and repeat that for each end of each bias strip so that they are nice squared off ends ready to stitch together we'll just make it a little bit easier when you come to stitch them together so just like that and then you want to repeat on the other end of your bias strips as well so pause the video and come back when you've done that so once you've trimmed both ends of each bias strip so they're nice and square, we're ready to assemble our strips into one continuous length. So the best way to do this, I found, is to join the pieces on a 45 degree angle. That helps distribute the bulk from the seams, although it's very minimal, it helps to distribute it when you come to wrap your fabric around the cord and almost makes the seams near invisible and very hard to see. So to begin, just take two of your strips, so it doesn't matter which two, and you might notice that my strips are quite nice and flat now because I've actually just given them a quick press. So if your fabric's anything like mine, when you pull it out of storage, it's usually got some lovely creases through it. It doesn't bother me the creases when I'm cutting, but when I come to this stage and I'm ready to stitch them together and then create my piping, I like my fabric to be nice and flat. So I've just given each strip a quick press. I haven't pulled it or stretched it. I've just laid it on my pressing table, flattened it out to get rid of the wrinkles and it's nice and flat ready to assemble now. So taking two strips, you want to lie your first strip horizontally. So being a left-hander, I'm going to work on, or I prefer to work on the right-hand end, and I'm just going to have the excess running horizontally off to the left. Remember, if you're right-handed, you may prefer to have it running in the opposite direction. So your first strip is right side up, horizontally across your work surface. Take a second strip and place it right sides down so that the two fabrics will be right sides together. In this bottom corner, you want to line the two pieces up so that this edge and this edge match together. And this corner in here is perfectly matched as well. So you've got a nice right angle going on with your fabric strips. Taking your tailor's chalk and a ruler, you're going to draw a stitching line from this top, top corner that's poking out underneath from the underneath piece of bias and you're going to rule it from that top corner down to this bottom corner here on this top piece of bias that you can see. So it's going to be a nice 45 degree stitching line and you're just going to draw that with your tailor's chalk and then pin it in place. If you have further lengths like I do, what you'll need to do is take this top vertical piece and you're going to fold it over and out, which is going to become the new horizontal piece. Take another piece of bias, place it right side down, so the two fabrics in this bottom corner are right sides together. Again, matching this outside edge here and this one here. You're going to take your tailor's chalk and your ruler and you're going to draw a stitching line and pin in place. So you want to repeat this process for each join on your bias strips until all of them are pinned ready for stitching. So for me I have one more strip so I'm going to take my vertical, flip it over so it's right side up and move it, the bulk of it out to the left so I have my new horizontal strip and take my last bias strip, place it right side down so my corners are together 
nice and square. I'm going to draw my stitching line and I'm going to pin in place. So now that all my bias strips are pinned together and I have my stitching lines drawn, we're going to head over to the machine and we're going to sew these together. Okay, so at your sewing machine, you want to start by ensuring that you have a thread that matches your fabric. So I'm using a nice blue fabric, so I've got a blue thread loaded and ready to go. You want your stitch length to be around 2 to 2.5 millimeters. And all we're going to do simply is stitch along those lines we drew earlier, working from one corner to the other on a 45 degree angle. So something to remember is you do not need to reverse at the start and end of these seams. It's an unnecessary step and as you'll find later it's actually really not needed as long as your stitch length is 2 to 2.5 millimeters, no longer. So working down those lines we drew earlier, you just want to stitch them as straight as you can all the way to the edge. And take your seam out and it looks pretty good. So it doesn't matter if your stitching is slightly wonky, it is a little bit tricky to get a nice straight seam given that you're stitching on the bias of the fabric. So it does want to stretch and move a little bit, but as long as it's relatively straight, working from one corner to the other, then you'll be good to go. So pause the video and repeat to stitch all the rest of your seams and then resume the video once you've done that. Okay, so what we wanna do now is back at your cutting table, you want to trim the corner of each joint off using a quarter inch seam allowance. You also want to trim off those excess threads as well. So just grab your ruler, line it up so it's a quarter inch out from the seam you've just sewn and cut it off. Okay, and that'll give you a nice straight edge at each join. So you wanna go ahead and repeat that for each seam that you've made on your length of bias and then pop back here for the next part. So once you've trimmed the corner off each join in your bias strips, just pop over to your pressing table and press each seam open. Okay, not to one side, you wanna press them nice and flat open. Try not to stretch the fabric because you don't wanna press it out of shape. Just pressing the seam nice and flat, just like mine. Now also, if you haven't pressed your bias strips at this stage or as yet, this is a probably a really good time just to give them a quick wee, wee press to get any wrinkles out because the next part is the fun part. We're going to enclose our cord in our beautiful bias strip and it just makes it that much easier if your fabric on your bias strip is nice and flat to begin with. So once you've pressed your strip and you've pressed all your joining seams open, it's time to head back to the machine and create our piping. Okay, so at your sewing machine, you want to ensure that you have your zip foot or piping foot attached. You want to ensure your stitch length is around 3.5 millimeters, slightly longer than normal, but not quite a basting stitch length. Taking your bias strip, make sure you have the fabric right side down, so you're looking at the wrong side of the fabric. Take your cotton cording and just lay it over top down the middle with about one inch poking out the end. I like to have that one inch out because sometimes you'll find once your strip is stitched, due to the stretch in the bias, if you have your cord right on the edge, sometimes it can disappear down into the tube and I'm not really a fan of unpicking. So I like to just make sure that I have about an inch poking out so I have something to grab and I can ensure that it's not going to disappear in case my bias strip stretches. So what you want to do is take your bias strip and you're just going to fold it over the cotton cord, wrong sides together, and you want to match the long raw edges of your strip together. Now some people will prefer to pin this in place prior to stitching, which is absolutely fine. I prefer to assemble it and stitch it as I go, and that's just a personal preference. So I've got my end of the cord poking out, ready to go. I folded my strip in half with these long edges matching, wrong sides together. I'm just going to pop it under my foot and I'm gonna grab the tail of my threads because I don't want them to disappear down just while we get started. And a little tip here is to make sure you have your needle in the needle down position so that every time you stop, your work is held in place. So we're just going to make a few stitches. Now you don't need to reverse for this 
You're just going to make a few stitches holding the tail of your threads so they don't disappear down into your feet or the feed dog area and we've begun. As you stitch down you want to ensure that the long raw edges are matched the whole way down and that your cord is sitting in the nice fold of the fabric. As you stitch it, it's not overly imperative that you stitch hard up against the cord. That's going to come later when you attach your piping to your bag panels. So for now, you just want to whiz down the side somewhat close to the cord, but it's not, again, it's not imperative that you stitch hard up against it. And pausing every now and again to readjust, refold, check those edges are matching, and let it feed through. So checking the edges are matching, I just hold them with my fingers and feed it through. And again, check the edges are matching, hold it with your fingers and stitch down. So continue doing that, pause this video and continue stitching the entire length of your cotton cord into your bias strip so that you have a nice assembled piece of piping. And there you have it, a beautiful length of piping created and ready to use on your next bag panel. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you've learned some new tips and tricks. Until next time, happy sewing.